So, herzlich willkommen. Oh. Hello and welcome uh, to the coverage of the regional proto qualifier in uh, Vienna at uh, Spielraum Wien. My name is Valentin Hauser and I'm here with Emanuel Gershenson. Hello. Um, I think you're a little bit experienced. Uh, two GP wins in the last few years. Um, at, at the moment, gold level player. That's why I'm not allowed to play. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, what can we expect from today? Um, we are playing a limited qualifier, which means sealed into a cut of top eight with draft. And the uh, limited format is quite interesting because many players are talking about green white as they <laughs> play in sealed. And I can kind of agree on this because green white has the best cards on average in the common and uncommon slots. So it's easy to build the deck that's playable but you still need rares because it's still sealed. Yeah, and uh, top eight will be a draft with uh, only one round because the top four are qualified for the Pro Tour. Yes. Uh, is there a difference uh, in the strategy? Um, for the top eight draft, maybe it's possible to force something, for example, forcing red, white, aggressive because you think that players are not going to pick up some cards like the pump spells that are really important for the red-white aggro deck. And yeah, I would be inclined on forcing something in draft, but it obviously depends on what you open. <laughs> for sure. Because opening ever obviously, yeah. Would be Will easy. probably lead you into white. Yes. <laughs> so uh, at the moment, the judges are distributing the product. Uh, after the uh, deck registration, we will watch a player yes. uh, building his deck and uh, sharing our thoughts yes. on the cards. Uh, the player is uh, Sebastian Fiala Ibitz. <coughs> he was a World Magic Cup uh, semi finalist with the Austrian team. And uh, some kind of a local. A magic player. Yes, he's really known in Austria. Plays all the tournaments. Yes, uh, attending. He plays a lot online, especially. Attending at many GPs in Europe. So, uh, about the limited format, I heard different opinions on playing 17 or 18 lands. Uh, what is your idea? In um, Shadows or Innistrad, I would always play. 17 lands unless I have to play three colors or I'm a real control deck like blue black with for example two rise from the tides and mono spells so you really need to hit the lands but otherwise I would always play 17 lands in this format and in general it's more uh, aggressive I think so yes because curve is really important in this format you get really punished by the werewolves if you don't have a spell on curve like turn two playing a werewolf and it flips the damage is already done usually yeah, and as I remember the two uh, most important two mana werewolves in 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 this scenario are those after flipping they have four power yes <laughs> but also there's the duck the the recruiter. recruiter if he flips you it makes everything cheaper yes. and so he's he doesn't have four power but the ability on the flip set is also really good not really a downside. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <coughs> so we hear people ripping their boosters. Um, it should be really interesting. Uh, what about the removals? What are the main removals you're looking for if you're not uh, an aggressive deck or if, if there is more a controlish uh, If you're not approach. that aggressive, you're usually looking to have a few bounce spells because they're the best combo you can have in this format because player p players will try to beat you with combat tricks so bouncing the creature in combat usually is a two for one also early removal is really good for example dead weight which should help until turn four for example yeah and murder's compulsion is obviously good also in the late game especially if you have a madness enabler it's super good um, what about uh, 
black red vampire strategies are these too hard to put together in seal tag i think so because you need rares and you need to curve and having both is really hard and also the really good black and red cards are not really vampires they are more like for example call of the bloodline an uncommon which enables madness and you don't want to play call of the bloodline turn two if you're the red black aggressive vampire deck um, so the most important thing is uh, the curve I would agree to this yes and a good mana base how easy is mana fixing in this format I think if you're two colored then the mana is not a problem at all it only gets hard if you want to splash something or really three colored because you usually need to have a green base you only have good fixing in green you have the three mana enchantment and you have the vessel to provide good mana and the forked road and the forked road obviously yes and the stoic builder to return lands also so i expect to see a lot of two color decks maybe with a slight splash for for example like a fireball something like this but otherwise probably straight two colored um how important are the come to play tapped lands it depends on the deck like if you're red white aggressive playing sec 16 or 17 lands you usually don't need a tapped land because you want to play the spells on curve obviously so it does more harm than help usually also there are not too many spells that have a double casting cost so i wouldn't play it unless it's really needed but the red white deck gets trumped by the green white deck yes <laughs> <laughs> so um i think so far this is quite fine uh, a small overview uh are there known players in the field for you or are there some players you want to point out um yes i also know that for example mark litfuck is playing this regional ptq he yeah, has yeah. a limited complete top eight then I heard that Tamash Narch will play. He also he has several complete top eights. Mm, Tamash, as far as I heard, he will arrive late because he had problems yes. at the border. I hope he arrives on time. And I heard of one Italian player. His name is um, Filippo. Filippo Crata. Who played a few pro tours also, and is also known in Austria a bit. Yeah, it has. Uh, quite good relations he yes was so those are the players i would watch for also sebastian fiala ibiz who we mentioned in the beginning obviously yeah and as i remember uh, there are surprising many austrian players yes uh i don't remember that there were so many austrians last time but i'm not really sure uh we will get the numbers for the country breakdown later mm -hmm. I think it's about nine or even more, yeah, something about around those numbers, yeah. which is a lot for Austria. And it's, it's uh, pretty good if you're uh, there at the moment. There is 56 players, yes, uh, which means it's uh, six rounds. Six rounds and cut to debate. With cut to debate, and it's a uh, quite good number if there are nine or ten Austrians. But uh, nevertheless, we will feature the best players. And with the best standings, and hopefully for us, uh, they're Austrian. I hope so too. But uh, the most important is that we have uh, interesting games, nice plays, obviously, and good interactions. Yes. So players, don't mulligan, please. <laughs> <laughs> Only if it's necessary. <laughs> yes. So um, I would say we make a short break uh, okay. and uh, wait for uh, Sebastian to start uh, deck building and uh, we will see you welcome back in the booth uh, the players are now close to be finished with uh, deck registration uh, we saw a few nice pictures from eternal masters so what do you think about uh, this Set the set looks quite interesting to me. Some cards are obviously just in to make players aware of some formats like Legacy Vintage. But also, I think it could be fun to draft. For example, you see all the elves and the synergy with the elves. 
and there's a, a small goblin uh, theme too. They yes. said they have only the elf type, but uh, there is also goblins. <laughs> yes, also goblins. But goblin trenches is a rare, and it's a card on its own. <laughs> you don't yeah. need other goblins for it. Um, in my opinion, there is some pretty strong um, mythic rares. Yes, I have uh, to agree. <laughs> so I won't imagine in a regular draft uh, playing against balance some or something like this. So I would <laughs> rather not play against balance in draft or mana crypt. That's even worse. Yeah. Playing turn on mana crypt. Whew. So, it's but I'm 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 pretty fine. It's uh, there are mythics, so you won't open them as frequently as a rare. But so my opponents will do. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think it's a pretty nice set. It's uh, I have to agree. Also, some cards got new pictures, and I really like some of those pictures. For example, Sensei's Divining Top. I just love the art. And I don't want to imagine what the price of some of the foils will be. Yes. Uh, also, there's the Japanese and Chinese print run. I don't want to imagine the price of foil Chinese Force of Will. Or something like this, or a mana crypt. Uh, yeah. So, um, our soul Sebastian is on the table. We will switch over. Yes. And we'll start with the. As promised, Sebastian Fjallowicz will be building a deck on camera. <coughs> so. So he opened the planes instead of a um, checklist card. <laughs> 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 That's rare. So. So, what are your thoughts? How are you uh, starting your uh, deck building? I would start with laying out the cards by color, as he does. It looks to me, yes, he does. And then I would. Um, continue with sorting through the colors by um, putting out the cards that I think that are unplayable, cards that I think are fringe playable and must playables in those colors. And he's not he's starting with this process it looks to me, but he has a pile of must playables and the rest. He's not You have to remember there's a difference to the previous deck building. You open the boosters yourself. Mm -hmm. It gets checked by the opponent, or okay. by the sit player sitting uh, on the opposite okay. side. So you already know your cards. Okay, so yeah. Probably you know how many cards uh, in which color are there. Yeah. And so he already has some thoughts, probably, yeah. Yeah. As you can see, this process is not taking too much time here. And you can be sure that it's yes. sorted by color and name. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> His green looks fine to me. He has two rapid mm -hmm. bites. At least a lot of green cards. Yes. Also two rapid bites, which is uh, <laughs> it's close to the best common in the set. Like fire tempo is obviously a little bit better than rapid bite, but in limited you would in draft especially you would prefer to pick rapid bite because green is a much deeper color and easier to draft. And he's starting with laying out the green cards, but yeah, doesn't look <laughs> like he likes the green, or maybe for later. This looks more like the aggressive archer type I mentioned in the beginning, like having a good curve and combat tricks, and he even has a fireball effect. Yeah, and it looks um, pretty solid. A lot of red cards. Yes. If we compare it to the number of cards he uh, laid out in, in green. Also, the spells are great. Uncaged Fury with Double Strike. It's just a really good spell. And people often die against the card. Also, he laid out Magmatic Chasm, which indicates he's trying to be more aggressive. But we have to wait for the curve, I guess. He's counting also the cards. So uh, 23 cards at the moment. Um, the curve is looking really nice. The curve looks 
fine, yes. He also has... He's also playing like 3 rares, if I'm correct. Yes, he has the Werewolf in the 3 mana slot and the 2 spells. But I think he should take a closer look at another color combination, not black-red. Because the spells he has in black don't combine very well with his red cards here. He wants to be rather aggressive with the red cards, but Call the Bloodline is better in a Madness Control deck, as it is also um, even after, which is a bomb prayer, but he doesn't have to play it here. He's yeah. returning a 2-2 two two and maybe a 5-4 in this deck. So let's have a look at uh, uh, Traven Instigators. He also has tossip, uh, Gossip Townmonger. More pump spells, another removal. And because he's trying and to be more aggressive, he's putting away the Drox Call. 7 drop which is a card that can win games on its own, but it's also expensive. Like, you need to spend 7 mana to cast it and 8 mana to get 2 tokens, for example. Yeah, this is probably not the right for, for this, this type of deck. Yes. I would like to see more 2 drops in this deck, but it could be fine, as he also has 2 1 drops. Yeah, for sure. So and this is the perfect example of the red-white aggressive deck. Like, you're playing super aggressive, lots of pump spells, and you don't really have a late game, because you don't have rare power besides the blaze in this deck, which can burn the opponent out of the game, if he applies enough pressure in the beginning. So, let's find out if Sebastian thinks, you know, the red is not yet set. To me it looks like he really <laughs> would <laughs> like to play the black rare, but it just won't work for him. And it has no home. Yeah, there are not enough black cards. There are only 8 black cards that are playable in his opinion. So the other color has to be really deep. And probably and only red provides yeah, this. Looks like red. I think I would try red-green. He has a few 2-drops in green and uh, rapid bites, which play quite well in an aggressive deck. Playing 2-drop, rapid bite attack is fine. And I think the curve would be great. I hope he's trying red-green now. <laughs> no? Okay, it's again black-red. So how difficult is this for you, uh, if you have some experience in the format and you regularly build your seal deck in a specific way, so your favorite color, you lay it down, your favorite colors, uh, to find a new approach. Yes. So like, like we see with uh, Sebastian, he puts down the red cards, uh, which are by far the best, the best part of this pool. Yes. Uh, so, how hard is this to go back now, for example, to go to the green cards after you have something like a red-white or red-black? Uh I think yeah. um, if you're able to identify your, so to say, best color, like you did with red, you should try to lay out all other colors with red together and just to get a look how the deck is. And yes, that's what I would do because just forcing on the colors you have in your hand and putting away the others won't build the best deck. You have enough time to try basically every color combination if you really want to. But it's also fine to just start with red here because red is his best color, I think. And still browsing yeah. through the unplayables? He might or have overlooked the borderline few playables. Borderline yes. playable. Then he also took a look at green and was not satisfied. Hmm. Maybe there are not enough green cards. Like, I remember that there are at least four green cards that I would for sure play. I saw two rapid bites and two two drops. And I even saw, I think, a five mana werewolf fair that draws a card. But 
the, the problem I talked to Oliver on Friday. Um, he does not like this werewolf in an aggressive deck because you don't have cards in hand. So sure, <laughs> but <laughs> the red green deck. Sometimes he does not very much, even after he flips. The good part about the red green deck is that you can either be aggressive or you can also win the game through a mid range game because you just overpower them with your spells. So the werewolf is usually fine, even if it just draws a card. It, ge it at least draws you a card. <laughs> yeah, it replaces. And if you win before casting it, you're obviously also fine. <laughs> He's still trying to m make red black aggressive work. Um, With a small splash into white? It looks like, yes. He can splash white. He has a white black land and um, the new evolving wilds that you can sacrifice for two mana. But I don't like splashing color in this deck because you have double casting cost and you rather you rather be aggressive with the stack so you don't want to have a tapped land or miss a land drop uh, or, or a, a, land a drop, drop or of miss the right col color yes so we are back to red white which are like more than red black in his pool it supports the aggressive plan way better than the black because the black tends to go also late with the rares and some late drops. Two, five, nine. So the Bound of Moonlight is one of the best removals. So it's yes. uh, like the Shadowmoor, I, I compare it to the Shadowmoor uh, Prison Term, which can also be attached to another creature. So you, you don't have to be afraid of uh, slamming it down on the first creature the opponent plays, because you can always move it to the best creature yes, you can has. always move it and also red white is probably not the best example for this but it also can help providing delirium which can be important in some decks because you can for example sacrifice a land or a creature if needed to enable delirium so bond and silver is a really really good card besides being one of the best removals in this format also Grief Spoon is a very good card because red white and the creatures instantly fly. Flying creatures are better, obviously. Yeah, and you can't get rid of it. Yes, it comes back for four mana. He's still. So there is some evasion. He's still not fine. Yes, he's still thinking. So the curve looks fine to me. It's aggressive enough. He has enough pump spells to push the damage through. Also, he has the yes. famous combo of uncaged fury and rush of adrenaline. That's a lot of damage <laughs> usually. <laughs> and 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 the blaze to yeah. finish the game. Also, he cut the 4-mana Flash Enchantment, if I'm right. I can't see it anymore in the picture. Which I would personally play in a red-white deck. Because um, plus 3 power and first strike is just huge in this format. Especially if your opponent is trying to stop you with, for example, a spider that has 5 toughness. Most of your creatures have 2 power, so getting to 5 power with first strike, that's just... Big enough yeah, to or usually kill or some creature. blocking shenanigans and can for sure completely destroy the opponent's mathematics. And now he's again black to the black and splashing white. I can see that he's into black because of Call of the Bloodline and the rare, but the deck is not really aggressive enough and doesn't have that that good of a late game to really justify playing it. I think that the white red build would be better than a red black because it's just more linear. Yeah, it looks more solid of a game uh, with a game plan. But for sure you can uh, always uh, splash white with the foil planes. Yeah. 
So <laughs> it's <laughs> obviously. <laughs> oh, that's the plan. <laughs> Fetching the foil planes. We have it. <laughs> Black has at least a combo of the Skeleton and Call of the Bloodline, which is 4 mana, get a lifelink token every turn, which can yeah. be good in this format, but it's usually not enough to beat, for example, a green-white deck with a normal curve and no rares, because they're just 1-1. One, one. And, and you get only one per turn, yeah, so you get, only you get, one per turn. get two until your next turn, if you have 8 mana yes. free. Um, if you're getting three, you could be winning already, but you also flooded a lot, probably, because you need 12 lands for three tokens. You get two, yeah. in your turn and the opponent's turn. Ah, sure, yeah. So only two, yeah. It's restricted. It's only one per turn. So. Once per turn? Yeah. But it's still nice. It's uh, more kind of a, a controlish playstyle. Yes. I think it's, more it's better on the defense side than uh, rather than going aggressive, because it's very yes. hungry for mana. This is the reason why I don't really like this deck, because his creatures try to be aggressive. He's playing um, a 4 mana 4-2, which is super aggressive with his stats, and you usually only play it in aggressive decks. And he also plays a 3-1 Scarecrow, which is... It's an aggressive it's card. It's uh, also not neighbors. really uh, the defense card yes. uh, by itself. Even though the reason could be uh, to, to for delirium. Yes, I think that could be the main reason or the curve. But such cards get much better if you have Magmatic Chasm as he does. So it's fine to play such cards. And he's still not sure what to build. He only knows he wants to play red, <laughs> it looks like. So, <coughs> thanks for the chat. Um, is I I will ask Emmanuel. Uh, <laughs> is splashing Griff's Boon better than playing True Fate? It depends on the colors you play. Like Truth Truth Fate is much better in a human deck, but it's also fine on its, on its own. Splashing Griff's Boon is also fine, especially if you have a splash land. I would tend to just play the artifact because. Splashing in an aggressive deck is usually bad, and especially with the tap especially land. with the tapped <laughs> land, as you want to hit your curve. So I would rather not splash the Grief Spoon. I might be tempted to splash Bound and Silver Moon because the quality of this card is just so high, and the splash is nearly free besides hitting your curve. But I would not splash Grief Spoon in this deck. And so now he's back to red white. I think this is the most synergistic deck he has. Has a good curve, good spells, can win the early game. He also has some late game with Griff Spoon on a big bigger creature and burn the opponent to death. So I would probably register this deck, but it's hard to say without seeing the other colors. I didn't see much blue and green. And I would love to take a look at green he here. He plays down the blue cards on the red before, uh, but okay. uh, he stopped after five cards or something like this. I don't know if mm. he had more, did not have more playables, uh, or uh, if he yeah. was not satisfied with uh, yeah, playing uh, the cards. Getting enough blue playables is really hard in this format because there are so few of them. Like, there are not really lots of good commons in blue. You're looking more for the uncommons. So you won't have more than, I think, five, six blue cards usually that are common. Playing only 14 creatures and one vessel could be fine in this deck because of all the combat tricks and the magmatic chasm. Like, he's not going to trade his creatures away 
that early because of the pump tricks. And in the late game, you just can play all the creatures and wait for the chasm and maybe jump block if needed. So I think he has enough creatures to justify playing this deck. Yeah, especially with uh, the Traven Inspectors, uh, which replace themselves and draw cards. Uh, they're a good card for turn one for sure, and not the worst card to play on turn three or later in the yes, game. Yes, also, yeah. So, even though their body is not the best, <laughs> it's only one two. It still uh, draws a card. <laughs> it still draws a card, and uh, I think this is a kind of deck where the number of creatures is more important than their uh, stats you need. Yes, the stats are fi fine. Like, they're not too important in this deck because of all the tricks. Just so needs to be a creature. Yeah, <laughs> there just need to be a creature in the play. <laughs> Don't really like uh, Sebastian to put down the green cards uh, to the deck. But it looks like he is fine. Yes. Looks like he's going to register this deck. I and yeah. So it's no surprise for you. Uh, we will have uh, Sebastian in our first feature match to see how this deck turns out. Uh, probably Patrick is going to have a short interview with with Sebastian about uh, what were was uh, what were his considerations um, and why he ended up in red with this uh, configuration. So I would say um, we're fine with uh, the sealed deck construction. Yes, I don't think that there are so many minutes left. And uh, we're we're going to be back in round one, I guess. We're having a break and be back in round one shortly. In shortly, yeah.